Rosacea is an ongoing skin condition that can affect the eyes and cause redness and inflammation. This is called ocular rosacea. In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Sana Shakil will be telling us all about ocular rosacea, the common manifestations, and the treatment options available, including ongoing eyelid hygiene. Dr. Shaquille? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Sana Shaquille. Dr. Shaquille, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me on your show today. Right, well, thank you for joining us, and, and thank you again for uh, coming along with us. Uh, we know you're very busy, so we appreciate the, your time here. Uh, so, Dr. Shaquille, before we uh, get started, uh, do you, do, would you let us know a little bit about your background and your specialty to our viewers? Sure. So, like you mentioned, my name is Dr. Shaquille, and yes, it is pronounced as Shaquille O'Neal. I was born and raised in Southern California. I completed my undergraduate degree at the University of California, Irvine and my doctorate's degree at Western University. I have been in practice uh, going on a decade now, and I also really enjoy optometry just because of the personal touch that we can give with our patients. And I'm also passionate about dry eyes. Also, I have some really exciting news that I will be sharing here first on the OcuSoft channel. My husband, who's an MD, and I are opening up our first private practice together, which will deliver thorough primary eye care, as well as advanced dry eye treatment, and also address aesthetic and cosmetic concerns our patients may have near and around our eyes. This will be located in Southern California, um, so stay tuned. It should be coming soon. Well, excellent. Thank you for the breaking news. You heard it here first on the OcuTalk channel. And uh, I love the Shaquille O'Neal reference. That's pretty awesome, Dr. Shaquille. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so for our discussion, Dr. Shaquille, we were hoping that maybe you could talk to us a little bit about ocular rosacea. What exactly is ocular rosacea? Sure. So, well, have you or someone you've known ever had just an ongoing puffy red eye and ever wonder, why is that? It could be ocular rosacea. And just to give a little bit of perspective, it is very similar to what we call skin rosacea in the sense that you can have redness, inflammation, and swollen blood vessels. It is essentially a chronic ongoing condition in and around the eyes. So Nick, I have to ask, have you ever cried through the movie Notebook or any movie? And be honest. Well, I, you know, I have cried through movies. Uh, the Notebook, I, I haven't, but there are other movies that I have cried through, yes. Okay, well, that is a great example of what your eyes would constantly look like if you had moderate ocular rosacea. Oh, well, wow, I, I never even knew that. Well, that's very excellent information, Dr. Shaquille. Thank you so much. And uh, so what causes it to happen? So it's still under continuous research. However, there is evidence pointing to a few key factors. One being genetics that you may have gotten from your parents. And at that point, you can legit say you got it from your mama. Um, bacterial gut involvement, even something like eyelash mite. And certain environmental factors like alcohol or sun exposure can trigger a response. And also, there's findings that show that possible conditions that just cause poor blood circulation throughout the body may also trigger this response. Well, I, I would definitely blame my mother if I, I did get something like ocularization. <laughs> Again, excellent information, Dr. Shaquille. Thank you so much. And what are the risk factors or complications associated with ocular rosacea? Great question. So this question in particular reminds me of a patient that I saw maybe a few months ago. And we'll call him Billy Bob for this example. He must have been in his mid 50s and he had fair skin and he came in with red patches along his cheeks and nose. He also came in complaining of a foreign body burning sensation in both eyes. The skin rosacea, the fair skin and middle age are all risk factors seen in ocular rosacea. 
However, that's not to say that ocular rosacea does not affect all skin types, but it is definitely more prevalent in fair skin. And taking a closer look at our friend here, Billy Bob, I saw he had swollen blood vessels. He also had debris along his eyelash base, as well as dry spots and a few turned in eyelashes. And these, again, are all complications noted with ocular rosacea. The dry eyes, the eyelid infection, the turned in lashes, and even worst case scenario, if left untreated, there could have been extensive corneal involvement leading to some vision loss. Well, that's amazing. And we definitely hope Billy Bob's doing all right now. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Dr. Shaquille, um, how common is it? Uh, like, so for instance, I'm assuming Billy Bob is a little bit older. Is it, is it common in like adults or is it, is it also seen in children as well? Wonderful question. So skin rosacea is found in 5% of the population in the world and affecting 16 million Americans. Up to 72% of these patients can also develop ocular rosacea. And to answer your second part of the question, Nick, it is more commonly found in adults. Well, again, excellent information, Dr. Shaquille. Thank you so much. And um, what, are the uh, what are the most common uh, manifestations? Like what signs or symptoms maybe should we be on the lookout for to uh, let us know like, hey, I should probably go see Dr. Shaquille about what's going on right now. <laughs> Sure. So some of the most common signs and symptoms we see with ocular rosacea patients include swollen and red eyelids, or they'll come in complaining of a gritty sensation. Often we'll see red, burning, itchy, watery eyes. Some of these patients can also experience fluctuations in their vision throughout the day, and they are more prone to styes, eyelid infections, and even tear gland dysfunctions. Again, excellent information, Dr. Shaquille. Thank you so much. And what tests are available to diagnose the condition? Like, what, what, do, you, what, what do you do when uh, someone comes in with ocular rosacea? What, what tests are, are you running? So there's no blood test per se. However, we listen to our patient's clinical history and based on all their symptoms, as well as our findings that we see under our microscope, we can confidently diagnose this condition. Fantastic. And what about um, different treatment options? Like what, uh, can, can can this be corrected? Great question again. So if you were to go on to Dr. Google, you'll see treatment options, which include prescription medications or at-home management options. However, with my decade worth of experience, I have found that it, it should be managed with a combination of treatments tailored specifically to the patient. For example, the patient, Billy Bob. I started him on prescription medications, gave him in-home care, and also started him on medical grade supplements. And at Billy's follow-up, he said that the treatments tremendously helped relieve his symptoms and that he wished he came in sooner. Well, definitely. Uh, I'm glad I got an answer to my earlier question. I, Billy Bob was doing good, so that's that's good to know. Uh, but excellent, excellent information, Dr. Shaquille. Thank you again. And uh, do you have like any take home regimens? Like you were just saying, uh, you did uh, actually give him something over the counter. Uh, wh what about your, what are your take home regimens for this? And can it return once it's been treated or is it just gone, gone, gone for good? Yes, definitely, Nick. I usually like to start with a more simplistic approach with at home maintenance, which basically include daily warm compresses or lid hygiene. And I do like the over-the-counter OcuSoft lid wipes and foam. I find it works really well with most of my patients. Also, I do like to approach this condition from the outside in as well as the inside out. So I'll often start my patients on medical grade supplements as well. Along with trying my best to help minimize their flare-ups in the future. So I do recommend avoiding certain environmental factors that may trigger symptoms to occur. Things like extreme heat or spicy foods and drink. So eating a bag of hot Cheetos, strolling along in 100 degree weather may not be the best idea if you have ocular rosacea. 
Well, I'm definitely going to stop doing that then on my my <laughs> summer walks. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And we're very happy to know that you use OcuSoft Lid Scrub, Lid Scrub for your uh, at-home maintenance. Uh, so, Dr. Shaquille, does rosacea get worse as, as we get older? I know that we said that it, it happens a lot in adults, but does it get worse as, as we age? So if left untreated, yes, it can progressively worsen. Like I mentioned previously, it is an ongoing condition. So if you think about it, it's very similar to having to continuously maintain the diabetes or high cholesterol. However, it can be managed by keeping up with the home maintenance, making lifestyle modifications, and then following up with your eye care provider regularly, um, which will all help maintain and control the condition pretty well. Well, fantastic. Good information there, Dr. Shaquille. And are there any new technologies or developments that on the eye care horizon right now that we should be, probably be on the lookout for? So yes, this question is really exciting. Recently, something called Intense Pulse Light Therapy, or IPL, has been all the buzz for dry eye disease and ocular rosacea management. And this technology has actually been used for numerous years in the dermatology world to help treat various skin conditions along with skin rosacea. But now it has been shown to help manage ocular rosacea and its secondary side effects. That, thank you for that information, Dr. Shaquille. And before we uh, leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to let our audience know about? Sure. Um, so first off, thank you so much for joining Nick and I and listening to our discussion here today. As mentioned before, ocular rosacea is an ongoing inflammatory condition. However, you do not have to figure it out on your own or have your symptoms affect your daily quality of life or solely rely on Dr. Google. That is what we, your eye care providers, are here for. We're here to help address any of your ocular concerns, whether it be from diabetes in your eyes to cosmetic concerns around your eyes. We're here to serve you guys. Also, if you'd like to get in touch, I can be found on Instagram and TikTok, and I would love to connect with you all. Thank you again for tuning in. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Shaquille. Everyone, that was Dr. Sana Shaquille. Dr. Shaquille, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you again, Nick.